Who jumped out at you? Is Terrell? Actually, I heard your interview with Junior, Junior Gallette, and I, I liked it. And first of all, I was kind of blown away by Junior Gallette. Like, he just, like, really seemed like kind of a soft spot. Like, for a guy with his background, he yeah. seemed like well thought out, soft spoke. I expect some sort of monster with some of these allegations against him. But he came off as a really nice guy. And then what really blew me away is he claims he's doing windmill dunks. Like he never could do before the two Achilles tears. Right. That was the craziest thing to me. Like, I don't know how I'd finish the interview without just like dropping the microphone and going, you, you do what? Because he's 6'2", 240. Like doing a windmill dunk at right. 6'2", 240 is ridiculous as is. Right. But then to do it off of two Achilles and say it's easier than it was before, like that's, that's preposterous. And his explosiveness is real. Like he's definitely one of the guys that has jumped out. And you don't want to get too excited because we've gotten too excited two years in a row. And then we've seen how that's gone. But his suddenness as an athlete, his ability to burst, his ability to get down in that, that super low stance that you've probably seen pictures of or video of, that is just wholly unique. And he's the one guy who can give Trent Williams problems uh, in these one-on-one drills. And if you can give Trent problems, you can give anybody problems. He's definitely a guy that's that stood out. And as far as his demeanor, like, I'm with you, EB. Like, and even in the past when I've talked to him, he's been a little bit more fiery. He seems a little bit more calm, a little bit more mature, a little more put together with everything he's gone through. His mature or his approach to kind of coming back through all this has been really mature and impressive. So uh, I, I was kind of impressed and surprised like you were listening to it as I was sitting there doing the interview. He's been better than Preston Smith, clearly? I would say from what I've seen, yes. Now, when I was there last week, there wasn't any pads on, so okay. in terms of how they're playing the run and stuff, which is obviously super important, but I think at the very least, as long as he's healthy, you're getting a pretty darn good pass rush specialist. We'll see about the other stuff in a complete game, but they've got enough options there that, that if he's just that, that is more than enough to help this team. I mean, they're not even talking. No one's talking about him. I mean, he could be a real asset. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't know why. Like, I think as camp goes, you're going to hear a lot more buzz about Galette. If he keeps this up, I think everyone's just so cautious. It's it's so much cautious optimism and thus quiet optimism because of what's happened the past couple of years. But if he keeps playing like he played the first couple of days and everything that I've seen that he's done since, then there's going to be a lot more talk about Junior Galette because it's part of what, the reason they were so bad on third down last year is they had no pass rush. And if he's so, if he's just a third down pass rusher, that's great because they desperately need it there's not as big of a gap between the starter and the backup as there was last year you know what i yeah, mean like there's i agree i mean it's just a, it's it's a closer battle with those starters versus their backups now they mean? have real options i don't know if they have any stars on defense i think i think that's like a giant tbd do they have a single pro bowl player on defense i know kerrigan made it last year but like he really didn't have that great of a year he's got to continue to stay healthy and produce at the level that he's capable of which is a pro bowl level does galette play enough to be at that level or can he at least be a star in his role if it is just that third down pass rusher you know swearinger's looked great so far but we'll, we'll see if he's actually a pro bowl caliber caliber free safety but they at least have guys that are more than competent which is an upgrade over last year and it seems like the backups are at least competent which is also an upgrade from last year mm -hmm. um yeah i'm glad you brought up swearinger because you know he was a stud in high school he was a stud in south carolina um i don't know what happened in houston and i mean in arizona he just kind of got cut i don't know why but they're expecting a lot from him um, he should fit well. And yeah, is... and he's in a different role than he has been. He's been playing a lot of strong safety, coming down in the box and hitting people. And there was kind of a reputation and on a lot of levels earned early in his career that he was out of control. This is a dude that even go back to South Carolina, like he lays the wood, he like he wallops people. And so he would go after some guys' knees, and there, it, the, the reputation around Swearinger wasn't great, and that it wasn't just that, okay, he may occasionally make a dirty hit, but that he was truly out of control, which we know coaches don't like. You want someone who's assignment disciplined and all that kind of stuff. He seems to have made the past couple of years really good last year. Now the question is, can he transition into more of a free safety role because they're going to use him in that role. They're going to use him as that center fielder, that deep guy in zone coverage, that deep guy uh, to supplement man coverage. Um, and then you sue a Cravens to kind of come down in the box, cover tight ends, running back, stuff like that more. So we'll see how much interchanging they do. They've done a lot of it in the past two years to the point that they even said, we don't have a free and a strong safety. We just have two safeties. This year, DJ Swearinger is the free safety. Sue a Cravens is the strong safety. And I think that's going to be good for both of them because I think they're both capable of performing in those roles. How do you see the depth? Because we were talking about the videos D'Angelo Hall was posting. Don't yeah, know when he's going to be ready mm -hmm. or anything like that. I know DeShazer Everett's there. Who else is going to be filling out that? 
back into the secondary. Yeah, I mean, I like DeShazer. He's a guy that seems to flash whenever he gets the chance. He had a couple of nice plays in the preseason last year. Comes in in the Philly game last year, has an interception. Um, he's still young and still learning the position because he came out of Texas A&M as a corner. But he's he's a guy that I like, and he's obviously going to make the squad because he's a great special teams player. Jay was raving about him yesterday and his special teams potential. Will Blackman's back there too. And then the other thing is they've got some versatile guys that are playing corner that they can rotate back, and this is how they can disguise some stuff. Like they've used some some stuff where Sua Cravens will drop up or even Swearinger will drop up a little bit. And then uh, from the nickel spot, Kendall Fuller will drop back and play safety. Breland's played some fast. they in depth there. And then we'll see, obviously, if D'Angelo comes back. Um, you know, those, those videos are impressive for a guy coming off the ACL. But obviously, you have to be able to cut. And, and going forward and backwards is one thing. But the biggest concern coming off an ACL is the ability to cut. So as soon as he's ready to do that, I think we'll see him back. But D'Angelo's out there every day taking notes. He's, he's giving notes to younger guys, trying to help them along. So he's mentally engaged right now, taking those mental reps. It's just he's got to get out there and take physical reps because for as long as he's been in the league, he hasn't played a whole lot of safety.